When we're making stomach acid, here we're looking at a parietal cell. Okay, so in a parietal cell, the first thing you notice is we got five protein channels. These protein channels are instrumental on in how our physiology is working because most of the breakdown is happening in these protein channels. So we have a potassium channel, we have a chloride channel, we got the chloride bicarbonate antiporter channel, we got the sodium potassium pump, we got the hydrogen potassium pump, and whenever you see ATP, you must think magnesium. Okay, so we know that these channels are absolutely critical. So let's just take a peek at these channels so we have a better appreciation for them. So these protein channels are embedded into the cell membrane. Sometimes they can be laying in you know, right just outside the cell membrane. And then with the stimuli of calcium per se, it can move the channel protein in. So you have some protein channels that are just in the cell membrane. Some are just laying right next to it and just need a little stimuli to push it into the channel membrane. But understand that the cell membrane is where we need to have integrity, resiliency, and strength so we can deal with the oxidative stresses that will alter the cell membrane, altering the channel proteins. So these channel proteins in the cell membrane are critical. Remember that cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, mostly made up of cholesterol, fatty acids, and some phospholipids. And so this is the importance of that cholesterol made in the liver. So this is why all roads always lead to the liver. So these protein channels are absolutely critical. And we know that these heavy metals, mercury, cadmium, copper, displace the zinc. And if these metals get into these channels, it alters these channel proteins where the doors can't open, the doors can't close. So it alters the protein structure. So we don't get the passageway to get these nutrients in. And we know that mercury can block thousands of ions of zinc, cadmium can block thousands of ions of zinc. We have zinc, cadmium, and mercury, and they're very similar. So it's like you have a family, you got brothers, sisters, and parents where you have many similarities to your siblings, but you're uniquely different. Now in this case, heavier metals will always dis displace the nutrient mineral. Now if these heavy metals are just hitting the cell membrane, that causes oxidative stress, causing an autoimmune reaction. So we gotta deal with these things that alter the cell membrane. So we talked about channelopathies, but let me just come back to the channelopathy. We know that channelopathies are, you know, some of the ones we've studied in medicine are the genetic channelopathies where you can't get the glucose into the cell. So if you can't get glucose into through the channel protein, then you starve. You know, the glucose has to get into the cell. Meanwhile, if these protein channels don't work, the glucose stays in the blood, destroying the blood. Meanwhile, the cell is starving for the glucose. So the chloride channel is when you have a genetic uh, defect in the chloride channel, that is cystic fibrosis because the, the chloride will come in, the sodium will leave. If the chloride can't come in, the sodium doesn't leave. So the sodium, wherever sodium goes, water goes. So that water, sodium, mucus buildup will become the suffocation and the death of you. And that happens with the cystic fibrosis when we have a genetic mutation in the chloride channel. Let's not forget chloride channels also needed for GABA. Alcohol can impede the chloride channel. The benzos impede the chloride channel. So this is an important concept to get are these, you know, all these pumps. And so just looking at just to make one you know, uh, amazing juice, that stomach acid, it takes five of these protein pumps and that's where most of the breakdowns are happening, whether it's directly in the, in the protein channel or it's on the cell membrane that's altering the structure of the protein channel. All right, so now let's look at the meat and potatoes of making this amazing stomach acid. So you have mitochondria in your parietal cells because anytime you have ATP, you have a mitochondria. And, and part of that ATP is producing the byproduct of CO2. We also have CO2 that will actually just, you know, diffuse in from the plasma. 
and it will get into the cell. So we have that CO2 that will immediately react with water via the carbonic anhydrase zinc dependent enzyme to make your carbonic acid. So this carbonic acid, like I said, is it's the acid base balancer. And in this instance, in making in the parietal cell, it's making our stomach acid because the carbonic acid will disassociate where the hydrogen ion will go through this proton pump. So the hydrogen gets into the lumen of the gastric pit. So here we have half of the equation of the stomach acid. We have the hydrogen ion. So as the hydrogen ion comes in, the potassium comes out. And this potassium is always being recycled because this is going on a million times a second and especially when we have food in us. So the potassium is being recycled via the sodium potassium pump. So the sodium potassium pump, we always talk about three sodiums coming out, two potassiums coming in. So they understand about the sodium potassium ratio. In hair analysis, we have 60 years of clinical empirical observation, scientific study on the NAK ratio, one of the most important ratios in all of human physiology. So this NAK ratio, we love it to be at 2.5 to 5. This is the ratio that we find these pumps work optimally. When the ratio, when the NAK ratio gets too high, too many things are flooding in. When the ratio is too low, not enough things are getting in. So this is why in hair analysis, we're always looking at this ratio. So the other ratio we always have to look at is the calcium magnesium. Remember I said we were gonna look at the FAB4? Well, we see that the calcium magnesium ratio is also critical. When we're making stomach acid, what I left out of the equation is the all seeing brain is regulating absolutely everything. So to make stomach acid, we have to understand in making of stomach acid, we need the autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic branch mediated via the vagus nerve, the vagus nerve will influence acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter, histamine, another neurotransmitter in a signaling molecule, and the hormone gastrin. So these are the players. So calcium will cause acetylcholine to be released. The acetylcholine will influence the histamine in the gastrin. So the gastrin and, and histamine will help these potassium pumps to be embedded with calcium moving these into uh, the right area on the cell membrane. So just understand that there's a very complicated mechanism with the whole chemical neuronal mediated uh, transmission of making your stomach acid. So anything that inhibits parasympathetic will be an inhibitor. So, so the sympathetic stresses, the fight or flight, the emotional dramas, the, 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 uh, the depressions, the anxieties, the chemical stresses, the metal stresses, all will be too much sympathetic stimulation that will inhibit the parasympathetic stimulation of making your stomach acid. So that's the neuronal stuff. I don't want to get too deep into it because it is complicated, but just for simplicity, parasympathetic, vagus, no acetylcholine, histamine, and gastrin are the main players in making of your stomach acid. So we talked about the hydrogen ion, so we got half the equation. And remember we said the hydrogens are good for methyl donors, you know, so, you know, we said a methyl group is a carbon and three hydrogens. So we can see this mechanism coming into play. All right, so the hydrogen disassociated made it into where, you know, we have half the ingredients to bake the cake to make that stomach acid. And then the other half of this carbonic acid, the bicarb will be disassociated and it will get into the plasma via the chloride bicarbonate antiporter. Basically, an antiporter means something's coming in this way, something's going that way. You know, it's uh, that's basically it's sodium potassium is also an antiporter 
um, mechanism. So the bicarbonate gets into the plasma, the chloride gets into the cell. What we're doing, we're trading a negative for a negative. So we don't alter the pH of the plasma nor the cell. And then this bicarbonate can go to where it needs to go, uh, whether it's a red blood cell, the kidneys, the pancreas, the lungs, wherever. And in this instance, we're talking about, you know, the parietal cell of the stomach. So now the chloride gets in and it goes through this chloride channel. Remember, if you have a genetic mutation with cystic fibrosis, these chloride channels don't work. Benzos, alcohol inhibit these chloride channels. So that's why we need to understand about these channel proteins. So now the chloride gets in. Now we have the negative chloride and the positive hydrogen making that gastric juice, that, that amazing gastric juice, and we know what that juice does. So that is, in a simple nutshell, the making of your stomach acid mediated via zinc, mediated by the big four, and a deeper understanding of these protein channels. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this presentation. Should you have any questions, leave a comment and I will get back to every one of you. And thank you for watching my presentation and have a good day. Thank you.